Good afternoon. Let me welcome you to our meeting this afternoon. This, of course, being our first general meeting for the year 2022. Uh, we have a quorum, and uh, so I would ask that we consider our meeting to be in session from this point forward. John, do we have any um, apologies? Yes, sir. We have apologies from Patricia and Tim Austin, both of whom could not make it this afternoon. And apologies from Gina E. Banks Petrie for running late. She is at another meeting that was finishing at 2 o'clock to come into to this meeting when Shatman not finishes. But she was on a panel that was being also live broadcast. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm aware that um, the director, uh, Ms. G. Gina, um, has, has a relational interest in um, work paper 05 before us this afternoon, and she'll be excusing herself at that time when we come to dealing with that. Is there anyone else on council with an interest in any matter before us this afternoon? Uh, Mr. Chair, not specifically an interest to do with any particular um, agenda item, but just a slight change in my circumstance um, in that I have accepted a contract at the Ministry of Sustainability and Climate Resiliency um, for the next three months. So it may affect um, some of my uh, voting decisions um, at this meeting and any meeting within the next uh, three month time period. Okay, so if I understand you correctly, then you'll, um, you'll let us know when any such uh, circumstance as it arise. That's yeah. correct, Mr. Chair, sure. thank you. Okay, thank you. If there's no one else then with any particular interest in anything before us, we'll move right on to confirmation of our minutes from our November the 24th, 2021 general meeting. The minutes were circulated. So are there any correction, any changes to be made to page one of the minutes. How about page two? Page three. And page four. Okay, since there are no changes, amendments, corrections, then I'll, I'll ask that someone move the confirmation of the minutes. Mr. Chair, I so move. Thank you. A seconder? And we have a seconder for the minutes? Yes, you, Mr. Mailer has put up his hand to be the seconder, Mr. Mailer. Seconded. Mayor. Sorry, I was oh, muted. So, sorry. Thank, thank you. Okay, that takes us in then to um, item number three on our agenda for the afternoon. Matters arising from our previous meetings. And uh, A, or legal challenges. Um, Mr. Chairman, could we postpone this until the director is here. She has more up to the information than I could give. Um, if for any reason she can't make it, I can try and fill that in for the council at the end. Okay. Um, given that then, should, should, we, should we move then, John, to um, our reports well, are we, and, we, and come back then to section three or? Uh, yes, sir, we can do that or just, or are they or I can do B. I can do everything. You can, you, can, you can do, okay. Yes, sir. Well, sure. Let, let us uh, continue. 
Better. Sorry, Mr. Chair and, and John, it's a little hard to hear. Um, if you wouldn't mind just speaking up in the room, it's probably just because you're a bit away from the mic. Thank you. Okay, in, in that case, then we'll, we'll look at uh, B on the three. So just to update council from the last meeting, uh, all currently all of the operations running tours into the Bloody Bay Marine Reserve have a up-to-date tourist vessel permit. Um, at the last meeting, it was a question regarding the aggressor, their need, um, the size of the vessel, but they are planning to switch vessels uh, from their, I want to say Cayman Aggressor 6 back to Cayman Aggressor 4. Aggressor 6 will go to somewhere else on a different name. And so that will not be an issue. At the same time that we were working with them on that, we've updated, we've contacted all the other operators and got new permits for them for this year. John, I'm okay. not hearing you that clear. You got a, a horrible echo. Okay, sorry about that, sir. I'm just saying, I don't know if this is better but by talking louder, I apologize. Just saying that all of the Bloody Bay tourist vessel permits are now up to date for all operators. And the Cayman Aggressor, uh, they are switching to a, one of their older vessels that is within the size limit for the park. Did you, did you hear that okay, uh, Harrison? Yes, yes, I did, thank you. How about uh, C, John? So uh, the habitable overwater dwellings, uh, the cabinet took their decision on the uh, Coastal Works application that was before them. Attached to that was council's recommendation to adopt the uh, draft policy for protected areas. Uh, that is actually going back to cabinet as a separate standalone cabinet paper being prepared by the ministry to go back to cabinet when they have time to fully consider that. Okay, thank, thank you, John. We'll just continue then on to D. And then Council will recall that since the last general meeting, Cabinet has approved a number of items. Um, first was the purchase and establishment of certain of the nominated protected areas, or certain areas nominated for protection, particularly a st extension to the Salina section, Eastern Interior, Little Cayman, that was also extending a protected area there, and extension to Hemington Forest in Cayman Brack. All three of those areas are still under negotiation by the Lands and Survey Department um, for their purchase. Cabinet also approved protection orders for Crown properties, particularly Sand Cay in South Sound, a couple of small mangrove keys on the west of the North Sound in Grand Cayman, as well as a small key in Booby Pond, uh, sorry, in Duck Pond on Grand Cayman. Also, the major part of Tarpon Lake in Little Cayman is now going under protection. And again, that eastern interior of Little Cayman, one of the adjoining coastal ponds has been protected by cabinet. These were all nominations that were pending uh, cabinet decision from council's previous review of public nominations and recommendations for protection. Cabinet also approved the protected area management plan for Mika Bay Pond in Grand Cayman and the species conservation plan for Sybil's Crown Baird in Cayman Brack. Okay, thank, thank you, John. We, we have Miss G with us. Yes, now. sorry, I was late. Yeah. I was on the panel for the Honoring Women's Month. <laughs> sure, we, 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 under, we understand that you are and that. Welcome. Thank uh, you. We we skipped over A, 3A, 
mm -hmm. or, or the legal challenges. Yeah. So um, could you yeah. bring us up to date as far as that's concerned? Okay, so I'll take the first um, the first matter, uh, which is the the judicial review over the Department of Agriculture and the Department of Environment's um, attempts to control feral cats in the sister islands. Um, I think everybody knows that that we are subject to or we have been subject to a judicial review and subsequently an undertaking not to trap cats until that had been lifted, any kind of um, injunction against that had been lifted. So at the moment, the government is in the final stages of confirming settlement of the application for judicial review that was initiated in 2018 by the Humane Society and Feline Friends in regard to the Little Cayman Cat Control Program that was being conducted by, as I said previously, the Departments of Agriculture and Environment. After a couple of years of negotiations, it appears that the lawyers for the both parties now are close to a settlement, and this means that the judicial, the application for judicial review can be concluded very shortly, we hope. So we hope to be in a position to um, deal with this in a, in a couple of weeks, hopefully. The second matter is the judicial review which the NCC um, and the DOE have uh, applied for and have been granted leave for um, against the CPA's decision to uh, not follow the directions given by the Department of Environment and the NCC. That matter, we now have a date set for the judicial review hearing. Uh, the 14th and 15th of June are the dates that have been set for that hearing. So that's the update on that matter. Okay, thank, thank you, Ms. G. No problem. It brings us down to um, item four on our agenda, uh, the reports. First one being, of course, uh, the public education and outreach. Yes, sir, just that the call for protected area nominations, the public call, the call for public nominations is now live. That has gone out um, through various media and the DOE will keep pushing that out for the council over the next couple of months. It went live for, for February 7th and is open until May 13th. Okay, so February 7th or May? Thirteenth. Yes, sir. Okay, thanks, John. B, climate change. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, following on from um, that protected area uh, discussion uh, that we previously had, I guess it should be noted that these areas um, will obviously go a long way toward meeting the global target of ending deforestation by 2030, which was agreed at the uh, COP26 in Glasgow last November. Um, obviously, also the protected area status uh, will maintain their um, ecosystem functions as sinks and reservoirs, which the NCC is tasked with promoting national plans for their sustainable management, conservation, and enhancement. So their collective removals will hopefully one day be reported soon in the annual National Greenhouse Gas Inventory um, to better capture the net per capita emissions that will be useful with updating the um, national energy policy and of course the um, climate change policy which we anticipate will be updated um, at some point in the near future. Uh, Council may also remember that uh, after our last meeting in November and December, um, the Director of Department of Agriculture and myself uh, visited a bamboo um, nursery on island and that is run by um, a local company looking to establish uh, offsets through that uh, sequestration by the bamboo uh, nursery for the RCPIS and the Coast Guard um, current fleet footprint that they have calculated. And the, they were able to 
uh, have right further discussions okay. with the prison service, and it seems as though they will have the requisite amount of previously disturbed farmland already zoned agricultural for agricultural use for them to do their outplanting when the plants reach to that certain age to be outplanted. And they will, in fact, have ample space to perhaps scale up their offsetting efforts for other CIG agencies or departments that may also similarly want to offset either their uh, fleet footprints or any other um, carbon footprints that they may be calculating at, uh, at this time or sometime into the future. Um, the next item uh, for the uh, members of the committee would be would be some PEO, I suppose. It could have fallen into the, the previous uh, agenda item um, that we did, specifically myself, Director DOE, and Deputy Director, in that uh, we gave interviews for the Cayman Compass's um, Climate Resilience Series, Fighting the Tide, and Council may have seen uh, some of those reports in the news um, on the 9th and 10th of March, if I'm not mistaken. And they followed on, if you had been uh, also watching in the news cycle, the IPCC's um, Working Group 2 report that was released as part of the sixth assessment report. And that report was specifically on impacts, adaptation, and vulnerability, and has specific sections to uh, small islands and low-lying coastal areas, which, of course, is very relevant to us. So we gave um, those interviews. And then finally, um, on my part, and I'll pass over to um, Director uh, DOE after this, um, the Climate Change Risk Assessment, um, the draft report, uh, which will report on the climate change impacts and the long list of um, identified risks um, is expected from the consultants at the end of this month for a local expert review to then be finalized thereafter. And a tentative date in May has been set for the local stakeholder workshop to be held here in Grand Cayman, which we'll be hoping to hear more about and report back to Council on that. Um, but it will be very interesting to see what similarities and or differences um, there will be between this initiative and the risk prioritization exercise that was done uh, 10 or 12 years ago under the Enhancing Capacity for Adaptation to Climate Change, or ECAC, project uh, that was also a UK-funded uh, project, which informed, of course, the um, 2011 draft climate change policy. So with that, Mr. Chair, I will turn over to Director of uh, Department of Environment for her further report. I Thank you, Lisa. Mr. Chair, I think that Lisa has covered everything that I, I would have said. Um, the, the only thing I would say is that once we receive the risk assessment to report with a long list of, of um, risks and, and opportunities, that there is going to be this meeting um, that will have all the stakeholders together that where they will rank the, the, the risks and that that whole ranking exercise will obviously inform the development then of actions and policies moving forward. For, for mitigation and adaptation to climate change. So we're very excited that we started, uh, actually started to do some more work towards climate change mitigation and adaptation. So um, that's that's really all I've got to say. Sure. Thank you, Ms. G. Yeah. It brings us, of course, to um, the Environmental Assessment Board, C, on the four. Okay. Uh, so to report, we have two environmental assessment boards that are currently impaneled. Uh, one is dealing with the EIA, the Environmental Impact Assessment for the Integrated Solid Waste Management System. That uh, project, we were informed several months ago now, has been put on pause while the parties uh, to the, the public private partnership that is Regen that sort of encapsulates the whole um, ISWIM's uh, project. Uh, they need to sort out some issues, some contractual issues. So whilst that discussion is going on, the EIA has been paused. So we're basically waiting for, for that to resume. The NRA have now um, 
gone out to tender for consultants uh, for the EIA for the East-West Arterial. So uh, we'll shortly be, I think, working with the NRA and whatever consultants are, are hired to develop the terms of reference for that EIA. And obviously part of, of uh, agreeing and finalizing those terms of reference is a, is a public or a mandatory public consultation. So the public should stay tuned for notices and notifications about when that uh, public consultation will happen on the draft terms of reference. Of course, we will we'll announce it and try to make it as widely known as possible. Sure. <clears throat> okay, th thanks, Ms. G. Brings us to section five of, of our agenda, uh, our work paper two. A police record exception. Yes, sir. So, council uh, will recall that the license and permit directives uh, control how the DOE issues licenses under the delegated authority from the council. Um, Cabinet, sorry, Council has previously approved that certain persons, such as serving police officers, don't need to get a police record for those licenses and permits that they need to get that for. Um, this was done before the Coast Guard existed. And so we recent, um, the Coast Guard recently applied to get permits for line for to take lionfish with a couple of their staff, and we recognize this uh, discrepancy. So we would like to um, propose that active Coast Guard officers be added to the persons who do not have to produce a police record when applying for individual permits, and that lionfish permits and CNET licenses be added to the classes of permits and licenses for which the exemption applies. Because again, we recognize that lionfish, it was sort of half applied in the directives and we just forgot about seeing nets. Okay. Okay. Thanks, John. So, Council, the, the motion before us then is as follows. To facilitate the issuing of permits and licenses to certain classes of persons, it is proposed that A, active Coast Guard officers be added to the persons who do not have to produce a police record when applying for individual permits, and B, lionfish permits and seeing that licenses be added to the classes of permit and licenses for which the exemption applies for all exempted persons. This is <clears throat> the motion before us. So can we have a mover for this motion? I will move, Mr. Chair. A, a seconder. I second, Mr. Chair. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? Those abstaining? I abstain. As Pierre. Okay, Pierre. How are we, John? We're good? We're good, yes, sir. Okay, th thank you. Mr. Chair, bef before you move on, I sure. just uh, mentioned that uh, I could hear you very clearly when you proposed the motion, but I really could not hear what John was saying uh, prior to that proposal. We, 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 yeah, we can we'll try, we'll try something different for the next motion. <laughs> yeah. That's Would, good. 
John, yes, sir? Um, would, you, would you want to um, reiterate that again, okay. to say that again so that they yeah. so. Okay, Stuart, um, I, don't know if, I hope you can hear me a bit better through this one while I try to work with my left hand. Uh, are, you, are you hearing now, Stuart? I'm hearing you clearly, Chair, Mr. Chairman, but I'm really struggling to hear John. Same here. Okay. So it's same. It must be me and not the two microphones I'm trying to use. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, can council hear me now? Or still not a clear, not very clear. Stuart. S still no. Still no. Still no. Perhaps we just move on to the next one, sir, and someone else oh, can read okay. that. Okay, let, let's try. Um, let's try this, Mr. Chair. What? Can I just on sure, a point of order? Did Stewart actually get to vote, or is he asking for the matter to be clarified so that he can cast a vote? I'm not clear on that. Stu okay, Stewart. Um, good point. Um, the director is raising here. Did you uh, get the opportunity to vote, or are you waiting for it to be clarified for you so that you may uh, vote? No, no, Mr. Chair. I, as I said, I could hear you clearly, and you actually proposed the motion, so I was able to vote uh, with a clear okay. conscience that I knew what we were voting on. It's okay. just a technicality. But, but if the motions themselves are presented by you, who I can hear clearly, as I can hear the director, um, I don't see a problem. Okay. Oh, okay. Thanks, Stuart. We're looking then at, um, it brings us down to B under five, Land Limited Hotel, the EIA screen and ratification. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Council will recall that this matter um, was considered at a working group meeting, uh, but just to reiterate the, the circumstances of the decision, uh, we received an application uh, from Land Limited Prisma Hotel and Condos for a nine-story hotel uh, with 44 guest rooms, five apartment buildings, 58 apartments, 10 duplexes, 20 townhouses, five house lots, a restaurant, bar, cafe, 20 pools, a canal, marina, docks, and parking facilities. So this obviously triggered the need under the EIA directive to screen the application uh, as to whether it needed an EIA. Um, the council obviously um, looked at the Department of Environment screening opinion, uh, which we issued on the 7th of January of this year, and also uh, looked at relevant assessments of the possible impacts of the proposed development, um, which could be made that would allow the Central Planning Authority to make an informed decision without having to resort to a full environmental impact assessment. Um, Council considered that a hotel needs assessment among, would be chief among some of these assessments that should be carried out um, by the planning department to determine uh, the suitability of the hotel in the area uh, proposed uh, as per the recommendations of the draft national planning framework and the tourism plan for Cayman uh, dated 2020. Um, Council also noted that water quality concerns associated with extending uh, an existing canal into the, the development and its impacts on water movement and flushing on the overall ecology um, of the marine uh, environment in the vicinity of the development should be addressed through the use of recognized flushing analysis models, and that was communicated to the planning department in our 
review of the application. Um, and last but not least, council noted that section 41.3 of the National Conservation Act requires the CPA to take into account the views of the council before making their decisions regarding any uh, specific application. In considering the, the screening opinion and all of those factors, council decided that the proposed development did not require an environmental impact assessment. And so council is being asked today essentially to ratify that decision. Okay, as you have heard, as you have been reminded, uh, this proposal was looked at by uh, the working group of council on the 19th of uh, January this year, and the uh, council decided that the, the proposed development does not require an EIA, M M Environmental Impact Assessment. It is therefore proposed that the National Conservation Council ratify the decision in regards to the need for an EIA for the proposed development. And that decision being that uh, an EIA is not required for this proposed development. This is a motion before this. It's before us now to ratify this decision which, which was taken at that meeting on January the 19th. So may I, may I have a mover for this ratification? I move. I'll second it. Yeah. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Anyone abstaining? I'll abstain. I, I'm going to I abstain as well, Mr. Chair, because I was involved, obviously, in the preparation of the screening opinion. And I abstain too, Mr. Chair. Um, unfortunately, I was not at that meeting in which the decision was taken. Okay, are we okay? Yes, John, got, got all the numbers. Brings us to work paper four, the Beach Bay Residences Tower. Okay. Um, council will recall that uh, this application, uh, which is deemed phase 1B of the Beach Bay Hotel, um, essentially is comprised of a road and a parking lot, some paths along the Iron Shore, uh, several pools, and then a seven-story residences tower. So it, it the, it's not, does not involve the wider Beach Bay development that's already been through the planning process. Um, this proposed development includes 27 units within the seven-story apartment block and related hospitality accommodations such as residence lounge, pool and deck, and ancillary services and utilities. Um, again, because it is a hotel uh, and, and uh, tourism sort of facilities, it triggered the screening um, under the, the Environmental Impact Assessment Directive. And the DOE carried out a screening opinion for council, which was delivered on the 12th of January uh, of this year. Uh, phase one of the hotel has an existing planning permission. And as phase 1A has already been approved, it can only be considered with respect to cumulative effects with the proposed development, which is the residences tower. Um, council also uh, noted that the bluff cliff in this vicinity is a habitat of critical importance for uh, nesting white-tailed tropic birds. And although the residential block is more than 100 feet from the mean high water mark, there are paths depicted on the plans with the setback from the mean high water mark and the bluff base. So one of the recommendations was that if the CPA would, were minded to approve the development, it was strongly recommended that a condition should be included that 
there would be no clearing of vegetation within the coastal setback um, as defined on the plans. And uh, again, council noted that section 41.3 of the National Conservation Act requires the CPA to take this council's views into account. So after considering all the factors, um, council decided that the proposed development does not require a full an EIA. Um, I just want to stress that just because it doesn't require an EIA doesn't mean that we don't think that there are significant environmental issues that need to be addressed, which is what the recommendations about the, the nesting uh, white-tailed tropic birds and no clearing of the, the uh, vegetation or disturbance of the, the cliff face in that area uh, of setback was, was all about. So um, just to say that Council decided that there was no EIA and we are now asking that that decision be ratified as required in the in the general meeting. Again, as, as you have heard, this is a proposal that was considered by Council in its work group session on the 19th of January this year. Uh, the decision was taken that the proposal does not require an EIA. That which is before us now then for ratif ratification is as follows. It is therefore proposed that the National Conservation Council ratify the decision in regards to the need for an EIA for the proposed development. And um, the decision, again, the decision taken was that it does not require an EIA. May we have a mover, please? I can move, Mr. Chair. Thank you. A seconder? A second, Pierre. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those against? Abstentions? I'll abstain, Chair. So will I, Mr. Chair. So will I, Mr. Chair. Are we okay, John? Yes, sir. D, or annual report. Sorry, mul multiple problems over here. Um, So council will have received the annual report pre previous to this meeting, and it is now for council to consider it, make any additional, any changes or fixes you'd like to John, make to I'm it. I'm so sorry, we still can't hear you. I want, and it's, it sounds like it's yeah. getting worse now. So I wonder if maybe um, changing positions in the room might help. Yeah. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Um, so just that the annual report was provided to council in advance. Uh, council have had a chance to look over it. It's now for council to consider it. Any amendments, changes, et cetera, you would like to make to it uh, before, and then if it meets council's approval, it will then go to the, well, the premier, uh, the minister for conservation, the minister responsible, who will table it in the parliament once it has gone, when its cabinet has seen it. And just noting that there was one more typo found um, by a council member on page nine, and we'll fix that before it goes any further. Were, were you able to hear John that time around, um, council? Yes, Very much clearly. better. 
Thank you. Yeah, obviously, we have an, a mic, a mic issue. Okay. Um, can council hear me now? JS has changed something on this end. I don't think so. Oh, we've lost him again. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Well, as John just gave us an, an update with, with regards to the annual report. Um, I, I do believe that uh, most of us have submitted any changes we thought necessary to John prior to this afternoon. Um, is there anything else that anyone saw, thinks that needs to be addressed? Uh, Mr. Chair? Sure. Yeah, I, I did submit uh, suggestions for changes, and John very kindly responded to me. I'm just wondering if there have been other people requesting changes. Have, have any of us actually seen a complete final uh, version with all the changes in it? Is there is there a possibility we could have that circulated and um, a final review, if, and then perhaps okay. uh, agree to its publication up, up by email or similar method. Sure. Um, oh, okay. That, John, was, John. that was sent on the email with the documents for this meeting, but as a separate attachment showing the, com the comparison of changes. Mm -hmm. Sure. The, the, um, Stuart, the revised one after all of the changes, that was set out um, with the documents for this meeting. The documents document. for this meeting. So the, the one that you got last would have all the revisions that were suggested. Uh, so I, I would ask then, in that case, I, I would ask then that we, uh, we take the time to look through that and ensure that the changes um, you requested have, have been addressed one way or another. And um, then uh, by round robin, we, we could confirm and, and uh, go forward from there. Is this the mind of council? Sounds like a plan, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, if, if I'm the only person that uh, has not actually reviewed the final document, I'm comfortable with going with, I just, I'm just concerned that there's quite a number of uh, cooks in this broth, and if we've all made our own changes and perhaps uh, something new has crept in, but if, uh, I'd go with the majority on this. Yeah, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Fine. that uh, to yeah. take, take another day to, to look at it, Stuart, wouldn't be a bad thing. So, so let, let's, let's continue and do it that way. Um, okay, excellent. Have, have, have yeah. a look at it. Anyone else who has not, then have a look at it. And um, we'll complete it by round robin and disseminate it from there. That sounds good, Mr. Chair. Okay. And under item six, oh, was there, was there something else for ratification, John? Yes, on, on that's the la very last thing. After Jim oh, oh out. okay, yeah. sure. <laughs> under item six, of course, we, we have our meeting dates. Um, for the rest of this year, and this is meeting dates, of course, as it relates to general meetings. This is not um, does not include our, our work group sessions, which would be listed separately. So we have um, June the 15th, September the 21st, and December the 14th. And I am aware that uh, there, there might be um, some questions as to whether we need to shift these dates forward or back uh, a week or something like that. And we'll, we'll address each one as we get closer to that time. But tentatively, the dates now, June 15th, September 21st, December 14th. Miss G, I believe you want to. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I am good with the dates other than the June 15th because 
it's the 14th and 15th that we have the hearing for the judicial oh. review. So probably you as well <laughs> would, would not be there for that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for that reminder, Ms. G. Yeah. Um, obviously, we're going to have to change uh, the June 15th meeting. Um, that that day is essentially taken already. So we'll mm. come up with a, a new proposed date for that. Um, what, and then may I ask um, at this time, what is generally the view of of council on it? Should it be a week later or a week earlier? When is the um, um, holiday? Because uh, we have a two day week, two day weekend for Queens. Yeah, Queens. that's that's early June. That's the third and the sixth, I believe. The, the so. or early June. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mr. Chair, I sure. believe in our um, previous discussions we had considered uh, June 22nd. Yes, that's what I was looking at as well, Stuart. Thank you for raising that. Okay, have, having considered June the 22nd already, then we'll um, take that as the tentative date for now, and as we get closer to it, we'll see whether that needs to be adjusted or if it is in fact a firm date. So then we're looking at the 22nd of June, 21st of September, and 14th of December. And um, um, sure. Mr. Chair, um, yes. sorry, there was um, myself and I, I think um, uh, the director of the National Trust also mentioned that the 21st of September might not work. And, and um, um, yeah, I, I am, I am mindful of that, and uh, okay, we we definitely will take that into consideration as as the time draws nearer, and um, okay, yeah, we will we'll adjust we'll we'll take that into consideration and adjust that meeting accordingly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure. And, and of course, all the meetings are 2 p.m. and all the general meetings open to um, the public. Are there any other business before us this afternoon? Anything anyone wants to bring to the table? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, we've been noticing here in the BRAC in particular, government, if they're setting up poisons for rodents, what is happening? I've witnessed this myself now. It's not only affecting the rodents, but we've seen crabs, land crabs, soldiers, and this morning I found a rock lizard poison. So I'm just wondering if there's something can be done or a different uh, chemical or whatever they're using bait can be used. Okay. Um, Mr. Mr. Bafo, sorry, would you be able to say that again? I didn't quite, I caught a little bit of it, but I wasn't sure of what yeah. um, you were proposing. No, what um, what's happening up here? If if someone requests agriculture because of rodents around their okay. property, uh, it's not only it's not only harming the rodents, but we're seeing it now: rock lizards mm -hmm. and uh, soldier crabs and land crabs now. We've seen it. I've seen it at a couple of homes here that I visited. So I don't know if there's what we can do or if there's anything that can be done that could probably change that. Mr. Aswick, are you in a position? Well, well, that wouldn't be agriculture. We don't really deal with okay. baiting for rodents. That would be the Department of Environmental Health, just for clarification. Yeah. Okay. But certainly, Mr. Chair, the, we can undertake 
at the Department of Environment to look into this and try to understand, you know, is it DEH or there, how, how are these things getting set and what some of the provisions could be that might mitigate impacts in other non-target <laughs> species. So yeah. we'll, we'll have to take, take a look at that. And I, oh, okay. and I think, and I think uh, Gina, for you, Mr. Chair, that some of the pest control companies are also doing the same. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I, I may have to come back to you, Mr. Bothwell, to get some details, okay? Sure. Okay, okay. thank you. Thanks, Mr. Bothwell. Any other matter? Uh, anything anyone else would like to bring to the table on the other business? In that case, it brings us then to item eight, our new matter, work paper five. Mr. Chair, I'm going to ask to be excused because I have a personal interest in this, so I am going to remove myself from sure. the meeting. And and I did explain that at the top of the meeting that okay. I was aware that you, you would. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Gina. Later. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Yeah, it will take track of my phone. You need any help with this one? With the dog? I think we can. Are you good? I can scroll it for you if you, you need it. Scroll halfway down. All right. When I start talking. So, so this brings us then to um, item number eight on our agenda, work paper five, the Seymour mixed use development. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I hope members can hear me from this side. Um, yep, clearly. Okay. I have a family relation to the applicants in question, but not an interest in it, That particularly not one that should preclude me being able to, well, show the, um, show the documents for council's consideration. And again, apologies to the, for the director, from the deputy director who could not be here to do this uh, instead. So... Sorry. Um, yeah, so the proposed action here is Central Planning Authority, well, an application to Central Planning Authority for a mixed use development on Block 5C, parcels 33, 192, and 193 down in West Bay. Um, Council was able to consider this at its working group session on 19th January 2022 and issue advice as needed under the National Conservation Act. And that advice is what is being here, coming here for ratification today. The proposed development site is man-modified, having been cleared in the past, and is therefore of low ecological value. The planting of native species in the landscaping scheme is recommended. Um, native species are best suited for the habitat conditions of the site and require less maintenance, making them a more cost-effective choice. Um, it is noted that the existing house on, on Block 5C, Parcel 193, which is proposed to be demolished, is listed on the National Trust's Heritage Register under the site ID WB021-01. It is recorded, recorded as having been built in 1927 and in good condition albeit the date of the entry on the register is unknown. It is noted that this site is not located in a historic overlay zone on the development plan, but that the Bogisan Road West Bay Historic Overlay Zone is located adjacent to the site, southwest of West Bay Road. Heritage is finite and an asset, and every effort should be made to retain heritage value where viable. It is therefore recommended that the National Trust is consulted on the application rather than just the, just, just the Department of Environment. Um, so it is therefore proposed that the National Conservation Council ratify the advice it issued in regards to the proposed retail commercial development at Block 5C, parcels 33, 192, and 193. 
Thank you, John. Uh, John has just read the review for you, which, um, which we submitted to the director of planning um, on January the 17th this year, 2022. Uh, and um, we are now here to ratify this, this review, which was submitted at that time. Uh, John just read it um, verbatim for you. So uh, can we have a mover? Someone move that this be ratified. I can move, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Seconder. Adrian, I second, Mr. Chair. Thanks. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? And of course, the abstentions. I will abstain, Mr. Chair. I abstain, Mr. Chair. We're okay with yes, that, that does, John. Okay, let me thank council, all those who have participated this afternoon, all of those who uh, are in attendance. Uh, this brings us down to um, the end of our agenda for the afternoon. And um, the only thing left at this point is the adjournment of our meeting. So we stand adjourned. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair.